I want to start with Christoph from Sonnen. He said something very interesting early on is we need to be brave. The reason we need to be brave is because the challenges and the opportunities in front of all of us in the room are enormous. And that's environmental, that's business. But I'm very convinced also that the opportunity, as I said, is enormous. So let me just give you a little bit of a view of this. One second, see if this works. The green one. The green one. Ah, yeah, good. So I'm, I'm convinced, actually, if you look back in the revolutions that have shaped our societies today, we start with the Industrial Revolution. It was caused by three things. It was caused by a steam engine, which in turn enabled us to take coal out of the ground cheaper and more effective, which in turn then allowed us to push transport, and we also had telegraph. So we had three of these things, and they created the wealth of the Western world, the United States and Europe, and the result of it really was that we left behind Asia. That's, that's, what, that's what this revolution did. We then also had another one, which was, um, sorry, this, uh, which was at the beginning of the 20th century, which was the internal combustion engine, oil and gas. And if we look at our big businesses today, 100 years on, you know, the same businesses are still leading our world. We've still got BP, we've still got Shell, we've still got Daimler, we've still got Bosch. And again, the wealth of Europe and US is created by this revolution. Now, I'm convinced now we're in a revolution in these three, three areas, which is going to change our lifetime. And I will start with the first one, is electrification of transport. The second, I will say, is renewabilization of energy. And the third one is artificial intelligence. And the question is, what happens when these combine together? Well, when these combine together, I believe we create a revolution. So what's the revolution? The revolution is a massive opportunity. This is 20% of global GDP, which is going to go to disruption over the next 10 years. And I say starting now, because some of us in the room have gone through a renewable revolution and think, oh man, that was a bit of a pain. This is the revolution that starts now. And let me explain what the disruptors are and why this is happening. Um, I would say the six factors. Firstly, there's change in society. Secondly, environmental. Thirdly, China. Fourthly, technology change. Fifthly, economics. And sixth, digitalization. I'll go through each of these. Let's start with society change. We'll start with the young generation. My daughter's Generation Z. Um, she's brought up with an iPhone. She's brought up with a tablet in her hand. And realistically, I can see the way she learns is completely different than the way I learn. Her attitudes are completely different than mine. My generation is just Generation X. And we're sort of in power at present and we're finding it a bit difficult. Um, whether that's leadership and policy, politics or leadership and business, we are not, we're finding it difficult. Why? Because what, we're, what we are as a generation is we're materialistic, we're competitive and we're individualistic. This young generation is completely different than that, right? And they have completely different values and they're into sharing things. They're into impact. Speak to any 20-year-old today and he says, I want to have an impact in the world. I, as a 20-year-old, was thinking, how can I make as much money as possible, as quickly as possible, right? The other thing that I would say is there's also, I would say, if you, if you look at this, there's a move away from ownership of things, right? That's a big society change. Why would I own something when I can pay for it when I need it? And this is, you're seeing this in the software and IT space, you're seeing it in Spotify, we're seeing this in the car area. The third thing I would say is that young consumers in particular, but also my generation, are becoming increasingly focused on environment, longevity, good health. Guess what? That's what Tesla does. Tesla's brand name is all about this. And that, when you look at that there, if I'm BMW or Daimler or Audi, I'm looking at this and going, oh my God, the Tesla Model 3 has outsold all my luxury vehicles last year in the US. And actually, you're seeing the same in Europe right now. The other thing is, in my office, one third of the people in the office in London have electric scooters. One third, right? Guess what? They're all millenniums. I don't have one. My partners don't have one. But all the young people in the office have them, right? Because they look at this and go, hey, this is a, I don't like the smelly U-Bahn. Don't like the underground. I don't want to own a car. Guess what I do? I do this. Society change, right? That's the first point. The second thing is environmental. It's not be clear just about climate change. It's also about air pollution. And I think increasingly you're going to see going forward, there's going to be real considerable talk about water and also our foodstuffs. So just very simple statistics. When I grew up, one in 10,000 people had, uh, were autistic. If you go anywhere in the Western world today, it's one in 36. One in 36. We cannot explain this. I tell you, 
ask someone really in the chemical industry or the pharmaceutical industry what they think, and they'll say it's our foodstuffs, okay? It's our foodstuffs. So you've got big environmental issues here that we see going forward. It's not just climate change for me. The interesting thing, though, about all of this is the policymakers across the world are taking action. That's, and, and this is going to continue going forward. And one of the impacts of that is, guess what? Renewable energy is going to continue growing because we're going to just push renewable energy to clean up our environment. There's just no way around this. Okay, you're also going to push diesel cars out of cities. Same thing, you want to get rid of fine particles. We want to clean up the stuff, right? Next thing, China. i just give you an idea. I've been in this space for maybe 15 years. China dominates every single key technology in the energy and mobility space. 90% of uh, electric cars in the world are coming out of China. 99% of electric buses. Try and buy an electric bus in Europe today, no manufacturer can do it, right? China have a market of 150,000 a year, but it's not just that, it's the materials behind this and the technologies in these areas that they dominate the production of. Um, the second thing, that's, we, we, it's very easy to criticize China. I don't. I think it's amazing what they've done. And I just want to give you the annual, I put down here the annual installations of electricity over the last 10 years in China. And what they've done is they've created the energy infrastructure of the United States in the last decade. Just realize what I've said there. Every year, they're adding the electricity capacity of Germany to their grid system. That's what they do every year. It's, we've never seen anything like the development in China. And you think of it, it takes us 10 years in Berlin here to build an airport, and you can see what China have done in 10 years. They've created the United States, okay? The third thing I would also say is from us as perspective, we all think China products cheap, et cetera, et cetera. Not true. Patents in artificial intelligence, machine learning, they're leading worldwide. Technology. Technology improvements, cost of renewable energy going down all the time. I can be very clear. I'm doing a lot of financing in this area. You're going to see costs coming down even further over the next years. Next thing I would say is autonomous cars. You don't want it to come. It's disruptive. It means we don't have drivers in 10 years' time. My daughter will not drive. I'm clear. She's eight. She will not drive, right? She's better things to do with her life. But guess what? It's a technology thing that's going to drive it. It's Google that's driving it. It's Apple that's driving it, right? It's not BMW who's driving it. It's the tech companies. Next thing is storage. Storage is the holy grail. So guess what? Battery prices are coming down. That's great. But the other thing is storage is also about using our demand very simply. So I have a very simple piece of intelligence in my home which I take the solar from my roof and I use it to heat hot water. It's better than doing that than, buying a, than putting it in the grid and buying it back at an expensive price. Next thing is economics. I always say economics and physics wins. Any engineer who tells you an internal combustion engine is going to be around in 10 years, show them this. This is physics. Efficiency wins in the long run. But guess what? In the short run, economics wins. This, i just given an example here of of what you see in, this is Minnesota in the United States compared to Germany, and you can see, sorry, cost of running an EV, it's cheaper, right? This is why DHL is actually using delivery trucks across the country to actually deliver electric trucks. Second thing is, I'm very clear, solar becomes the core of the energy system in the 21st century. The core of the energy system is oil at present. I'm saying it's now going to be solar. Why? Because of costs. And those of you who think this is mad, please realize that where does the oil come from? It comes from solar at the end of the day. Okay, that's, that's where it comes from. The carbon cycle starts with the sun and the air. So why not take it straight away and convert it into electricity rather than, rather than convert, converting it into biomass and coal and oil that takes millions of years? I mean, it's stupidity, really, right? Next thing I would say is that we have grid parity coming with the cost parity coming with the EV to the internal combustion. Not running costs, because we're already ahead of them already. It's CapEx cost, 2021, 2022. Next thing, economics drives us towards autonomous cars. If you have autonomous cars, guess what? The cars use 90% of the time. Second thing that happens if you've no drivers, why would I buy a car, right? Young generation in London, Berlin, they're not buying it already. Everyone will not buy it going forward. Next thing, D, is digitalization. Digitalization for me is artificial intelligence. Won't go into this, but I would just say to you is, please have a look at anyone who's a chess player. Look at AlphaZero, the what they're doing in the game. They've produced new methods for actually chess. 
The chess, they actually put the, uh, the, the king in the middle of the board. This is ch any chess master or player would say, well, you don't do this, you can't do that. This is what they're doing, and they're doing it in a very, very different way. It's only a game, but I'm very clear it comes into our lives. It comes into our lives first and foremost in vehicles. That's where it goes. Artificial intelligence and robots firstly goes into that. The second thing that happens, it goes into the grid. It's already happening. This grid has become so complicated that a man in a control room can't control it. It's impossible. So what you have to do is use algorithms and technology to automize it. What does this mean? What this means is, one, automobile industry, big issues in front of them because the value goes to software and hardware, and the hardware changes as well, right? So, you know, suddenly Volkswagen has to become a software company. The second thing is value moves into new mobility services. Uber just IPO'd. Uber's valuation is greater than any automobile manufacturer or supplier in the world, right? That's telling you something. In my energy space, where I do a lot of my work, value is going downstream. You have to be close to the customer, right? This is why Sunland is a very interesting business model. Fourth thing I would say is, are these incumbents going to survive? Uh, are they going to have a Kodak moment? GE has a Kodak moment right now. Siemens is deciding they're going to get out of energy. So you can see they're sort of going, oh God, this is difficult. Then I would say there's three unknowns, I'm going to stop. Three unknowns is, will the new disruptors take the lead? The second thing I would uh, ask is, or maybe the last slide I would say, is this revolution will impact the wealth of nations. And my gut reaction is, China is the one who benefits from this. The reason I say that is because they understand this and they think long term and we don't. That said, this is a massive opportunity for all of us in the room and I wish you all the best.